Hey friends, Heather Creekmore here. Today's show is one that I didn't plan on doing ever. And I may have told you it doesn't really connect with what we do here on the Compared to Who show, but boy, (laughs) was I convinced otherwise. Today, we're going to talk about physical issues related to not having a strong enough pelvic floor. Yeah, that doesn't really sound like a body image thing, does it? But yet, I think as we go through today's show, you're going to see how clearly this connects to a lot of struggles we have, especially my friends who are eating disorder recovered or in recovery. There's a variety of different physical things that can connect to these kind of issues that may have been triggered or brought on by some eating disorder behaviors. I will give you a warning if you're listening with your kids in the car, we do talk about intimacy towards the end. So maybe save this one for a time when you can listen alone. There's also some medical words and body part words as a part of this episode. Um, You may not want them repeating if they're, you know, say under three. (laughs) But anyway, y'all, I just have to tell you personally. So I did this episode with with Jen Lormand and from the company is called Tighten Your Tinkler. And I signed up. I signed up right away. I was convinced. Jen and I have a separate conversation that I'm going to put in the Patreon community about the number of times I have to get up and pee every single day and sometimes all night. And she really helped me identify that between that and the uh, little bit of pee that comes out when I sneeze or cough, that these are things that I needed to address. So I signed up for their program. Yes, I went all in and I was so impressed, you guys. So you're going to be hearing all about this program through the month of September in my ads because the program is awesome. It's really well done. It's really simple and clear to follow. And it actually works. I could tell a difference within a week. Um, The exercises are simple. There's lots of modifications depending on what level you're at physical fitness wise. I mean, they really have thought of everything. It's so well done. They are so supportive through the journey. And it's so easy. It's not like a daunting big surgery thing or it's it's literally 10 minutes a day a few simple moves now I want you to listen to this interview and take it all in because I never knew I had pelvic floor muscle issues I had no idea and I used to work in the fitness industry I didn't even know this was a thing so listen to today's interview let me know what you think Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Jen Lormand, thank you for being on the Compared to Who show today. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. So today's conversation is going to be maybe a little bit different than some of the others on the show, especially some of the ones this summer. I've been doing a lot of summer coaching, but I'm excited today to see where we go because Jen, you're a little different than some of my other guests. You are an exercise physiologist, as I said in your introduction, but you and your pal, Christina, do something very specific. Can you tell us what that is? We do. So we help women who are dealing with pelvic floor dysfunction and prolapse. And the name of our business is Tighten Your Tinkler. Insert your giggle here. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Trying to make light of a heavy topic. (laughs) But I'm (laughs) bummed. Ah, so my friend Amy Connell sent me a message. She's like, you have to have these women on your show. And I saw it and I was like, oh, Amy, I like you, but I, this is too much of a stretch. And then I started looking more into what you all do. And I was like, you know, this is, this is interesting because 
we talk about the spiritual emotional side of things a lot in terms of body image, but part of what you do is address a physical issue that I've heard you say is probably having an effect on the way we feel about ourselves. So talk to me more. How does tightening my tinkler <laughs> work? And what does that mean for my life and my well-being and my body image? That's a loaded question, Jen. <laughs> it is a loaded question, but you know, first off, I have to say that I have stage two prolapse of all three compartments. So bladder, uterus, and rectum. So Christina and I both with our own personal stories have walked this path and bring a tremendous amount of empathy and compassion to this topic. And it's really what led us to do two years of medical research to figure out a better way where you're not trying to figure out if you're doing a Kegel properly or manipulating yourself with devices and further destroying your dignity and your self-confidence. Um, you know, after our combined 36 years of doing this type of work, what we have found is there's so much more than just the physical symptoms of P leaks and poop leaks and gas leaks and back pain. Um, our pelvis as women, our womb is our spiritual and emotional center. And when there is dysfunction, when you lose control over simple things like using the restroom, um, there are deep wounds that begin to happen spiritually and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And you begin to compare yourself to other women walking around looking like they have it all together. Mm. Other moms who had the beautiful birth story with no consequences that you know about who have had the four children and she's at the gym looking like she's running and doing and lifting and doing all the things that she wants. And here you are, every time you do a jumping jack or you sneeze or you cough, you're peeing your pants. And sometimes it's enough to where you feel like you need to change your pants. Yeah. And so, you know, when that happens over and over again, there is this degradation of spirit mm -hmm. and feeling broken, both yeah. emotionally and spiritually and questioning, you know, God, I thought that this was part of who you made me to be is to have babies and reproduce. Why, why, when I'm trying to follow your path and your plan, are these things happening to me? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's pause for the non-medical community myself sure. included. Yes. Okay. What, what are we talking here? What does prolapse actually mean? So I'll just confessions here. So I had C-sections, four of them. And so I think I was, I don't know, early forties and I got into like champ trampoline jumping. And I did like this fun little blog post on this new trampoline, you know, jumping that I was doing. And I must have gotten 10 emails the day I sent that out saying, I don't know how you can do that. Every time I jump, I pee. And I was like, oh, well, I don't do that. It must be because I had C-sections. And then, I don't know, about a year or so ago, sneezing <laughs> became a dangerous activity for me. Unless I cross my legs first. Um, that yes. is my new, my new maneuver is cross your legs and then sneeze. But that doesn't always work, especially if you're driving. So what, what are we talking here? What are, what yes. technically, what does it mean to have prolapse and, and what are the symptoms and all the, I'm yes. asking the medical question without sure. the medical words, but, yeah. but tell us what we need to know about this. Well, first off, if you're a visual learner like myself, head over to our YouTube page because we have like a three-part series with visual aids explaining this to you. So if you feel like this is you and you want a little more information, please do go there. Um, prolapse is essentially the falling of the pelvic organs down into the pelvic cavity and into one another. So the, we have these three different compartments in the pelvis um, and the pelvic floor is responsible for really holding our guts up along with our pelvic organs. Different things happen to women through their lives. We work with women who have not had children, by the way, who deal with these issues. If you have a kinetic uh, tissue disorder, something like Edler's Danlos syndrome, we've worked with many of those women. But this is a collapsing down 
and then into one another. So every single type of prolapse is different. There is stage zero to four, um, zero, obviously being the easiest to correct really what we tell women and what we've proven with our research is stage zero to two, it is possible to stop. And in fact, possibly reverse Mm that those symptoms. And that has been the case for me. I mean, I am blessed in that I get to walk around every day and forget that I have prolapse because I use this protocol. Um, stage three and four does require a little bit more intervention. They have different devices called pessaries that many women use. And that's really just scaffolding. It's, it's a little device where you place it and it acts like scaffolding to hold the pelvic organs up because stage three or four, that means you have a bulge that is indeed coming down and out of the vaginal opening Mm. or out of the rectal opening, which would be separate. Mm. You would not be able to use a pessary for that. And that's, is that a surgical thing that would, they would be a better candidate for surgical intervention, but that too is tricky. Okay. Talk about that. There are consequences to having this surgically repaired. We were all aware of, uh, the mesh failures that have been in the news, our bodies typically do not like foreign substances in them. Mm -hmm. And, um, the way that they're installed and just the way that your body adapts to having something foreign in your body will really determine the success of that, that, that surgery. There is a 25% failure rate. And this is reported failure rate to these types of surgeries. So it's, it's no small decision, Mm -hmm. um, to get these things fixed, but we're talking about, you know, tremendously detrimental to your self-confidence. I mean, some of the women that have reached out to us dealing with particularly the rectal, the rectus seal or the rectal prolapse, this impacts your life dramatically. You have Mm. no control over bowel movements. You, you constantly feel like you have pressure in the rectum with something coming out. Um, you know, a lot of pain, loss of intimacy with their spouse. Um, just, you know, awful mortifying things that they are dealing with. Yeah. So, you know, I would say that if some of your listeners maybe have a history of eating disorder specific to taking laxatives uh, or constipation, you know, kind of that constipation diarrhea cycle with a lot of straining and downward pressure, this can provoke that rectal prolapse or that rectus seal. And the difference between those two is a rectus seal is a hernia of the rectum and the rectal prolapse is the actual protrusion down and out either into the vaginal cavity or down and out of the body of the rectum. Okay. Okay. I don't think we've ever talked about the rectum on the compared to who show. (laughs) So this is new territory for us today, (laughs) but so, so help me though, because I heard you say something on my friend, Amy's show just about how it's not really just about the pelvic floor. Like this can be the cause of hip pain and back pain. I have a bunion. I think you said the word bunions in some context. So, so what are we missing? Like, I, cause I, I feel like I'm not a doctor, obviously I don't give medical advice on this show, but I feel like I know a lot of people that like the first, as soon as they have back pain, it's just a back problem. If you have hip pain, it's a hip problem. (laughs) If you have foot pain, it's a foot problem. And so I think part of your thesis is no, there's a connection. So can you flesh that out for me? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we are one body, (laughs) you know, and everything is connected and particularly for your muscular skeletal system, which is all of your muscles and bones, the muscles are attached to the bones and they are what move your body. And, you know, from, uh, a connective tissue perspective, you know, something really geeky cool is the connective tissue that holds up your bladder actually comes and slings all the way around your neck. So many women with prolapse have neck pain and neck issues, or they have the hump because that falling down of the bladder. If you think about a pulley system and a rope, you've got a pull down, that's going to pull the head forward, 
right? And then combine that with driving, texting, being on your computer yeah. in, in that rounded forward. And you've got this building of a real big problem. And that's just one thing, right? Because your back extensors are a part of this picture, right? So mid-back, diaphragm, yeah. hip rotators, right? These are all of the different glutes, you know, I mean, a very common thing that we see when I, when I used to have my in-person clinic is a lot of the women coming in would have the flat butt syndrome is what we call it. That mom, butt. well, if you don't have a, butt, that means your glutes are dormant. So hmm. your back is having to do a lot of that work hmm. and you've got some pelvic floor dysfunction. Hmm. So all of these things are related and that connective tissue comes all the way up to the neck and goes all the way down to the arch. So the common denominator with most of the women that we see with pelvic floor dysfunction is flat feet and bunions. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I totally firm believer that we are one body. The holistic approach I think is the only approach that makes sense. I know I've benefited greatly from chiropractic. <laughs> it has yes. been huge in my life, but the fact that my pelvic floor could be causing my posture problems, like Jen, you have blown <laughs> my mind there. Look, so Heather, I, I will tell you in the first couple of sessions, like in the first week of our research, the number one feedback that we would get, and this is, I'm talking about like session one, session two is I feel taller. I feel huh. lighter, literally activating this foundational muscular system. And again, what we're talking about is the pelvic floor never works in isolation. That's why we don't believe in Kegels. Cause that's an isolated movement for the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor works with deep abdominals, back extensors, diaphragm, mm. and hip rotators with the glutes. They all have to function and work together. Wow. So. Wow. Okay. So I was just going to ask you about Kegels, but you kind of answered that question. Although I'll just throw this out there because someone else is thinking it. Yeah. Like that's the only thing I ever heard of to do. <laughs> right. And, and honestly, uh, because I was preparing for this, I was thinking, you know what? I don't know that I've been actively reading anything or exposed to anything that has told me to do Kegels recently. I think probably the last time that was even in front of me would have been when I was having kids as some part of, you know, preparing for pregnancy or preparing for delivery or just staying strong during pregnancy or whatever terminology they would use. So I don't, I don't think I hear about this anymore. Um, and, and if I was to think about it, I mean, even as I've had my Oh, I'm going to sneeze cross the legs incidents. I've always thought, okay, I need to do Kegels. I need to do Kegels. So yeah. Kegels are not the cure. Kegels are not the cure. Now, before you get any hate mail about this, <laughs> what I will say is there is a place for Kegels. And that is if you are completely incontinent. So in mm. other words, if you have completely lost control over bowel and bladder, Kegels is the bridge to the next step because we have to be able to get those muscles to actually turn on and fire. Okay. So there is a window of time where that would be appropriate. And maybe even at that point, if you're dealing with complete incontinence, like I was after my first birth, internal stimulation of those muscles might be what you need to get them to turn on again. But we're talking about a very short window of time. This is not a strategy for a long term or a root cause approach to the issues like you were talking about stress, urinary incontinence. And the thing that the example that I always use with Kegels is it would be like if you came to me as an exercise physiologist and said, Jen, I just got this new job. It's actually quite physical. I have to bend over a bunch and pick stuff up and put it to the side. And you were like, you know, my biceps just feel so weak. It would be like, and that's a full body movement that we're talking about, right? That you would have to perform. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, what we're going to do is I just want you to place a weight in your hand, bend your elbow at 90 degrees and just squeeze as hard as you can and then stop. And then just do it again. Squeeze as hard mm -hmm. as you can. Will you get stronger in that one position? 
Yes. Sure. But is it actually going to help you functionally move something from one thing to the other? No. no, no. And your pelvic floor, you know, Christine and I are kind of on a rampage. We, we say your pelvic floor is not a magical unicorn. Is it special? Absolutely. It's uniquely yours, but it's like every other muscle in the body. We have to train it functionally, mm -hmm. just like we do with the rest of our body. Yeah. So that's what we do. We teach whole body movements and it's a sequence that is 10 minutes or less every day that is truly life-changing. Yeah. Okay. What about, we talked a little bit about eating disorders. Yep. Was there anything else on that front that we didn't, didn't hit? You talked about laxatives and well, digestive so bulimia issues, but... is another, um, you know, we've worked, I have worked personally with women who have dealt with bulimia for years. And again, obviously aside from all the esophageal and teeth problems that they end up with from all of that acid eating away at both the tooth enamel and the esophageal lining, um, what they end up having is pelvic floor issues because mm -hmm. it's a, it, it's a very volatile, um, reflex, right. Right. Or the body, and your whole it, body there, is throwing up when you throw up, there right. Is yeah. a lot of downward pressure and you feel yeah. that, you know, some women have told me, Oh, you know, I noticed, you know, after I started making myself throw up that I would actually pee on myself while I was making myself throw mm. up. And, and so that really has negative consequences on the core and the pelvic floor as well. And what, if, what, what about over exercisers? What, what do over, I mean, I'm totally in that category solidly, you know, stretching that's a waste of time when you could do more cardio. That was my MO. So what, what do you see with over exercisers? What, uh, what symptoms do we have that relate to the pelvic floor? Yeah. Over exercisers. So my ladies who are over exercisers and, um, we have quite a few. Um, trying to slowly change that mindset. And if, you know, you, you really do have to change that mindset if you do Absolutely. come into our program, because you do have to slow down to speed up. Sometimes it's, it's just the way we were made. Um, but oftentimes we see a lot of chronic hip and back issues. You know, the diagnosis is that these ladies have dealt with is sciatica, sacroiliitis, burst hip bursitis, IT band syndrome, mm -hmm. um, patella femoral syndrome, patella tendinitis, um, all of these different things and just chronic low back pain, or maybe you don't have a diagnosis, but you feel knee pain a lot, mm -hmm. or you hear your hip clicking and popping when you do certain ab movements like TRX pikes or reverse crunches and those types of things that clicking and popping is bone on bone. That's your body's first kind of, it's not really a whisper. It's kind of like, Hey, something ain't right here. You know, mm -hmm. and if you keep ignoring that, then, then the rumblings get a little light louder. And that's when the other things begin to act up. Piriformis syndrome is a very common thing that many of those women deal with as well, because when something hurts, they just stretch more and they want to work it out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it feels great. Like once I get going, you know, once yeah. like the first 10 minutes of my jog, it's really bugging me. But then once I get going, I'm fine. But later that night, man, my hips killing me. Yeah. Well, and so what, it, I mean, this is maybe a little out of your scope, but when we just keep going through, through that pain, what it's just our endorphins and adrenals are taking over and convincing us we don't hurt anymore until, <laughs> until well, they back there's down. There's a chemical imbalance balance, but there's also a legitimate warming up of the tissue, okay. right? I mean, in the way that I explain it to clients is it's like a cold rub rubber band versus a warmer rubber band. Yeah. It has more pliability. So yeah. as you begin to continue to move, your tissue does have more pliability. And as long as there's not like a labrum tear, right? Where there's a tear in that connective tissue. And now it's catching and creating pain. Every time you take that step forward, then, you know, it does feel better, but it's, yeah. it's actually not getting better. And if you yeah. don't like pause and, and take a moment to listen, then you're going to end up with an injury. It's not really, if it is when, right. Right. And I talked to so many clients who, Thanks to the eating disorder, the disordered eating and the yeah. exercise side of that, 
have just kept going until the point of injury and, you know, and then been forced to stop. So I think that's going to be a familiar tune, but I think it's, it's a little mind blowing, Jen, that our pelvic floor muscles are that important and that we need to Very tighten our teeth. Incredibly tinkers. important. <laughs> Look, they hold your guts in. I don't think it gets any more important than that. They, they are what help you maintain your center of gravity and your, yeah. your, your center. Yeah. But just so, the, so I totally, like, I see that that makes so much sense, but thinking about like the messages of the diet culture, you yes. know, that we see everywhere, like those are the last muscles you work on because no one sees them. <laughs> right. Yes. You know, it's so it's, it's so funny that the truth in, in what you're sharing and then what's under the truth is that, wow, this, this set of muscles, is it appropriately a set or is it just a muscle? Oh no, it's there's a set. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is set of muscles that no one sees mm -hmm. is what could be extremely important for <laughs> everything else. And there's such a great analogy there to like, what's, what's on the inside. That's making a difference to <laughs> everything on the outside. Right. Look, I live in South Louisiana. So I always liken this to, these are your foundational muscles yeah. and it would be like building a house in the swamp here without yeah. a foundation. Yeah your house ain't going to stand for very long. Yeah, yeah. So when you strengthen that internal tourniquet or that foundation, it is sexy. You feel that inner strength and that confidence. It changes your posture, changes your intimate life. Yeah. Let's, I wait. can't tell you how many fan letters we get from husbands. Well, yeah, let's, let's go there for a second. If you don't mind. So like, Not at what, all. what are, what's, what's the symptoms there? And then what, what's the after story? What's the correction? So first off, I want to preface this with, I'm, I'm going to be speaking directly to pre or perimenopausal women here okay. because postmenopausal, they start to have issues with estrogen and that does impact the integrity of the tissue at the vaginal opening. So okay. I'm not speaking to that. Um, many women with pelvic floor dysfunction and prolapse have pain with intimacy. And I think women get this wrong. They think that means pain with insertion. Okay. And sometimes that's true, but other times it is pain higher up in your abdomen with insertion. So not at the vaginal opening, but it's that pressure differential that we talked about. So kind of think about, um, I kind of liken this to the example of like plunging a toilet. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that suction that's created in that pressure differential can create pain and discomfort higher up in what feels like the abdominals with intimacy. Okay. Um, this could also be, you don't have pain during the actual sex, but you have swelling after sex, hmm. you have pain after sex, this, that is all of the symptoms that we are talking about. Or, um, if you have an overtight pelvic floor, which most women with pelvic floor dysfunction, you know, the pelvic floor is a bowl of muscles. So when there's dysfunction, generally one side, whether that's front back or one side is tighter than the other, this can, um, cause you to dribble some urine during intimacy. Um, so all of those things are not normal. And by the way, crossing your legs to sneeze is not normal. <laughs> you do not have to do that. <laughs> or to do a jumping jack or cough or any of that stuff. <laughs> leaking pee is never normal. I just have to say that that's, that's solid advice. What about not feeling like you can mm, tighten that's tonicity? So that is a tonicity problem. And that gets alleviated very quickly with our program. Mm, okay. So. so that's what we call hot dog down a hallway syndrome. We do <laughs> hysterical reel on this. If your listeners want more information, we try to keep it PC and have a little fun with this. Cause it's so, it's so awful. <laughs> oh, now I have an image in my head. <laughs> May never leave. <laughs> Hot dog down the hallway. Okay. I will remember I'm writing myself a note to put some parental guidance on the intro of, of this uh, episode. But okay, Jen, tell me more about the program. Apparently I need it. <laughs> I, 
I would love to send it to you. Um, it is, you know, we say for 30 days, give it 30 days of being consistent, but truly if you are someone who's been dealing with this for a while, um, this is going to be kind of the rest of your life, taking a couple minutes each day, just like you would with any other quote unquote exercise program. You know, we don't have expectations if we're, if we're strength training regularly, and then we stop strength training, we don't have any expectations that we're going to maintain that strength, right? Yeah, sure. The same is true with the, these movement patterns. It's not something, yes, you can do it for 30 days and start to feel better, but if you stop using those interventions, it's going to come back. Yeah. So, you know, this is something for a woman who knows she doesn't want surgery, who knows she doesn't want to do Kegels, who knows she's not interested in sticking dilators and other internal devices and wants something holistic that will fit into her lifestyle from home. That is what we offer. It's a very simple 10 minute a day movement routine, and it comes with recovery tools. So we teach you how to alleviate some of these pain points as you're building that strength and that, that baseline of being able to get these muscles to come back on board. And we have a bunch of freebies that I, I would hope that your listeners would be listen, uh, interested in. First of all, we have a quiz, which is fantastic. If you're thinking, is this me, would this be a good fit? Go and take our five minute quiz. It's linked in our bio, I could certainly send you a link for your show notes. Um, but that is based on the research that we collected in our research study that's published in the Journal of Women's Health Physical Therapy. So it kind of lets you know where you fall in terms of severity of symptoms, whether or not this would be a good fit for you. We offer something called our back and hip relief. So for all the ladies who feel like your mid back is tight, your low back is tight, you can't get your hip flexors to turn off, which is another big problem that a lot of our ladies have. We have a, a like a 10 minute decompression movement with breath work that we teach. So it comes with a PDF and a video all free and Honestly, we've gotten testimonials on just women who have tried that and are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, the other thing that we have, if, if, if you have been kind of hearing whispers or feeling maybe when you're showering or using the restroom, you're feeling downward pressure, maybe you're feeling a bulge down there. We also offer, and I'll have to send this directly to you, Heather, um, something called our intimacy guide. And this is really you know, how to have that conversation with your partner, with your spouse, because this is mortifying and embarrassing. I mean, I, I know it was difficult for me to really speak to my husband about this, um, as I was going through this because it's embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> and so this really helps, uh, there there's journal prompts in there and really just kind of laying out how to have this conversation, um, that's so personal, um, with the person that loves you the most and with the person that, you know, you want to be with the most, because these things really can impact your marriage. Um, so that is something else that your listeners could certainly get. Awesome. I love that, Jen. And I love, I love that you're thinking holistically just in terms of, it's not just a physical problem. There's, you know, a relational aspect to this and an emotional aspect to this. So all of that is, is really awesome. Well, Jen, Thanks so much for being on the show today. And I will Thanks make sure that we have me. all of those links in show notes. Sounds like some great stuff. And it's all found at Tighten Your Tinkler, right? Uh, just for anyone just yep. listening, tightenyourtinkler.com. That's correct. And, um, and they can go there and, and find out more about your program. And we've arranged for you to save $50. If you want to try the Tighten Your Tinkler program, just use the coupon code Heather and you'll save 50 bucks. So there's that. Thanks for being on the show today again. Thanks so much, Heather. I really appreciate it. It was fun. I hope we didn't, you know, make anyone blush, but I'm sure we did. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get some message like, uh, Heather, I'm not, what was that? <laughs> but it was really good. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. Thank you for listening today. I hope something in today's episode has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye.
Oh, hey there. Before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor? Leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free. The Compare To Podcast is part of the Spark Media Network, now available on the Edify Podcast app. Grab the Edify app in your Google Play Store or on the Apple Podcast app. You will be so glad you did.